All right, before we start with today's session, uh, just some protocols. This is our very, very first episode, and we could not be any more intentional about the first guest. I'll let you in, or rather, I'll let you see why we say we were intentional about today's guest. Uh, before we just go any further, today's episode is shot at AI Impact Podcast Studios. Please do look them up and have a look at Lifestyle and Tech, that website. Thank you. Um, I did mention that today's speaker is, or today's guest rather, is someone that we were intentional to just on board for our first episode. You know, every now and then, life surprises you with a chance encounter that leaves a lasting impression. For me, this happened at work. In a room full of people, one person stood out, petite, poised, and beautiful crown that was impossible to miss. We had a conversation about our upbringing and the fact that we're both from the Eastern Cape, born and bred. Next thing I realized, oh, we're speaking about life, ambitions, and our dreams. Uh, I don't want to dive deeper into her story and her journey, but it's an inspiring one about a dynamite in a small package, a girl with bold dreams and the courage to chase and make those dreams a reality. Please help me welcome Mitha Mabono uh, to share her story, just to celebrate with our community, the woman she is today. Mitha, <laughs> welcome to Me To You. We're so excited to have you. Hi, Pal Lisa, thank you for having me. I am honored and mostly excited to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Like, I am literally excited. Oh my God. Um, as you can see already, big, bold dreams, big, bold hair. Okay, let's get into it to find out why did we choose Mitla? What is that one special thing about her apart from chasing bold dreams? Mitla, I'd like us to take it back to your childhood and roots, where you grew up, just for us to get a glimpse into who are you, Mitla, as a person, apart from the accolades. Um, okay, so um, my name is Mitla Mabono. Well, I'm known for legend, uh, but I'll tell you why. Um, <laughs> I grew up um, in a small village in the Eastern Cape called Guzolo. I am the only daughter um, of Ntiembu um, and Tumeka Mabono. Yeah, that sounds like an obituary, but hey. <laughs> um, I am a sister to seven brothers and the only sister to seven brothers. I am a middle child, so... Yeah, I am. I should be very relatable because I'm a little child. <laughs> yes, I do not want to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Um, so yeah, I was born and bred um in the Eastern Cape. I grew up in the Eastern Cape. I studied in the Eastern Cape, and I only moved to Gauteng like a few years ago, four years ago, ago to be precise. And it was my first time outside of the Eastern Cape. All right. Growing up, I just want to understand the people who shaped your views on life, your morals, and sort of that launching pad for the person you later became. Who were those people for you? All right. So um, I think that uh, for me, a lot of people played like a huge part into shaping the person that I am. Like, I think every encounter or mostly all of the encounters that I had with people growing up, they played a huge part into becoming the woman that I am today. But uh, most importantly, obviously, it's my parents because um, they guide me, they took me through life, they gave me some of their values, which I adopted to make them mine as well. So they obviously played a very important role in my life. But also, I'd also think that my brothers as well, I have noticed that uh, most of the stuff that I like, uh, the things that I do, they are influenced by them, like almost everything. It's mostly their influence. And then uh, I think that um, outside of family, I have had a wonderful opportunity or let me say like um, a blessing of meeting wonderful friends along the ways, like people that were the same age as me, but that actually saw so much in me. I have a couple of teachers as well in school that also played a huge role in my life. I think particularly, I remember my grade 12 uh, physics teacher, Seti K. I hope he sees this. Um, uh, he believed in me like um, so much that it was um, astonishing to me that somebody who barely knows nothing about you could actually 
actually have your back like that. I remember this particular incident. Um, we were having um, an awards ceremony at school. So he used to call me number one, like number one. So uh, we had this awards ceremony at school. And unfortunately, my parents couldn't make it because it was COVID at that time. So there was like um, only a few number of people that would be allowed in gatherings. And so um, he he is like, don't worry, I will I will be your parent for the day. And then um, they started calling out my name. And then he ran from his seat um, in the podium. And then he just ran towards me. Aww. And then he put me on his back. And then he's like, this is my number one. This is my number one. Aww. And it was like such a very emotional full circle moment for me. And then I realized that, you know what, um, it doesn't have to be blood. You know, like people outside can also you know, play a huge part in your life. And yeah, I think he just stands out uh, for me uh, as like one person that actually like pulled through like so many times. I could talk day in, day out about him, but I think, yeah, it was, it was that one person that I think outside of family played such a huge role into the person I am. Kindness, loving, and, you know, caring for people even if like um, you just met at a certain point in time, yeah. Sure, Mithla. Um, what I'm taking from your story is that sometimes you just need that one person to believe in you. Like, I'm rooting for you. I know he manifested it, number one, and you actually did become number one. So I really love that for you. It Thank doesn't you. take family. It doesn't take the person to be blood, but you can create your own family. I exactly, love that. Exactly, exactly. So you said there was an award ceremony. There's always this notion when you say you're from the Eastern Cape, knowing that the Eastern Cape is one of the underserved provinces. I just want to understand what schools did you go to, primary and high school, just to get a glimpse of how did that look like for you? Okay, uh, so taking you through my school journey, so um, I started at um, Magukanya, Magukanya Preschool, and um, that was like just a preschool, like... Um, in my area so I did that uh, in the Eastern Cape we don't do grade R unfortunately <laughs> yes. you do preschool jump straight to grade yeah. one <laughs> so I moved from the preschool and then to grade one it was a Libodia private school um, it was very foreign because um, I do, it needed me to speak English and at that time I was not an English speaking person <laughs> So yeah, that was that. And then um, from there, grade one, because um, of all also like some struggles that we had, had to move out of the school. And then we moved, I moved on to Mount Nicholas. Um, I was still staying with my grandparents at that time. Um, and then I had to move in with my parents. And then that's when I actually started like a proper primary school, which was Mahama and JSS. That school played mm. such a huge role in my academic life. Um, that was the whole... A duration of primary that was from grade three up until grade nine. I was doing um, I was doing academics at Mahamani Primary School, and then after that, um, I then enrolled with Saint James for my high school. <laughs> um, yeah, that is I guess my academic journey. And then after high school, I then um, got into it and. That is everything and every school that I went to. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, you mentioned that you went to St. James for your high school. Um, I think most of us who are from the Eastern Cape know that St. James is one of the best schools in the Eastern Cape. So I just want to understand that transition. You mentioned that, um, you know, in primary school, you sort of had a good school that kind of set you up and bridged the gap. Was it easier now to transition into St. James, knowing that a lot of people who are top achievers come from St. James? Was it easy for you to blend in? Um, actually, I have a story for that. Um, so um, moving from Maamani to St. James, so I was comfortable at Maamani, right? And also I had a huge issue with change. Like I hated change. Like I did not like change at all. So moving from there to St. James was a bit of a struggle for me because now all over, I have to like e express myself all over again, you know, like introduce myself again, like to these new people. And another hard part was that um, my family was from Ndabangulu and then St. James is like on the other side of the Eastern mm -hmm. Cape. So it was far from home. So I was starting somewhere new. I did not know anybody. I was just starting again on my own. So it was quite of a struggle. 
But I think that on the transition part, it did take some time because I think I started making friends at the second semester um, or second half of the year. And then, yeah, but what was most hard, though, is that everybody, when I got there, knew each other because mm. they were all from the surroundings. You know, they were into competitions together. They have seen each other somewhere, somehow. And now suddenly there is this girl, you know, who is also here now. And she's also trying to be a somebody in this new school. I remember a particular incident. I was in grade 10 at that time. Um, so... Uh, my maths teacher, Mr. Nyengane, at that time, um, he was announcing, like, you know, like, who students who did great, you know, and then um, he announces me, like, to be on top of the Ooh. class, and then I see faces, they're like, who are you? Like, the hell, we've never seen you before. And then I remember this boy, my friend now, as Babale, he came to me, he's like, hola, ungubani, <laughs> usugapi, and then, like, it started, and then, then I'm like, hey, I'm me, you know, I'm also trying to do this education <laughs> thing with you guys. And um, from there, yeah, I then started becoming known, you know, and also able to express myself more and all sort of those things. So, but the transition wasn't so easy, but I think mainly it was just because I was from somewhere else getting into a new territory. Yeah, oh, wow. I could say that. Yeah. I think what I like about what you just said with us is even though you came, you know, you got into a new space, you didn't know people, but you still never lost sight of why you were there. You still performed academically and you said, they're going to know me, but for the right reasons and the reasons why I'm here. I really love that. Thank really. you. <laughs> I really don't want us to leave anything out and um, I don't want to leave any stone unpa- uh, unturned Mitla. So you mentioned that you attended St. James with one of the top um, performing academics there, uh, academics there, I believe. So I just want to understand um, at what point did you start thinking about, oh, you know what? I want to do this for my career or I'm looking into this. This is the stream. Also, what stream did you first um enroll in for at St. James was it science was it commerce and then eventually when you did that what did that look like were you intentional already that I'm going to do commerce or I'm going to do science and then in the end I'm going to be a scientist or whatever did you already have a painted picture of what you wanted to do 